In this presentation, I am going to talk about the ins and the outs of rain gardens and rain barrels. Do you know what a watershed is? I'll give you a hint. It is not a shed full of water. A watershed is an area of land that drains to one location. This is the St. Joseph River Basin, which is the watershed that Elkhart County is in except for one small part in Napanee, which drains elsewhere. The main concept behind a watershed is that water runs downhill. Let's talk about stormwater. Stormwater is exactly what it sounds like. It is the water that comes from weather events in the form of rain, snow, or ice. Looking at this diagram, we can see four different scenarios. The first scenario is optimal. The ground is covered with natural vegetation, which allows for the water to infiltrate into the ground with only about a 10% runoff rate and a 50% infiltration rate, and the rest is evaporated. In the second scenario, we have built a house where we have eliminated some vegetation, increasing the runoff rate and lowering the infiltration and evaporation rates. In the bottom two pictures, you can see that this trend continues. In the bottom right picture, runoff has increased to 50% and only 15% is infiltrated. So think about how land use affects stormwater runoff. More development means more impervious services which means more water runoff and less infiltration. Fun fact, a modest 1,500 square foot house on a small lot may produce over 5,000 gallons of runoff from a one inch rainstorm. Now imagine how much runoff one neighborhood would produce. Now you may think, oh, well that's just water and that is natural. Well, stormwater is natural, but the pollution that stormwater can carry, such as trash, chemicals, or oils, is not so natural. Here is a picture of two rivers that are converging into one. You might recognize this downtown scene. This is the Elkhart River, and this is the St. Joseph River, where they merge in downtown Elkhart. What do you notice about where those two rivers converge? Well, the Elkhart River looks like chocolate milk, but that's no milk I would ever want to drink. The number one pollutant in Elkhart County is sediment. That's why the river looks that way. One of the ways that we can help prevent stormwater pollution is by reducing the amount of runoff. So that's where the rain barrel comes in. A rain barrel is a large container that is connected to gutters coming off of a house or a building and collects the water. As you can tell by these pictures, rain barrels don't all look the same. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. So why else would you choose to have a rain barrel? Well, you can collect water for when it is needed, like watering your plants. It also reduces the amount of runoff that enters the storm drains which then has to be processed and cleaned before it is released into the river. It also can be a piece of art or decoration in your yard. Together with the Greater Elkhart County Stormwater Partnership, we offer a rain barrel incentive program, which allows us to reimburse up to two barrels at $50 a piece. To qualify for the program, you must follow these requirements. You have to be an owner of property in Elkhart County. You must agree to maintain the barrel or barrels for at least five years. You have to complete the application and you have to attend a partnership or approved workshop, which this presentation qualifies for that. And you have to submit receipts with a photo of the installed barrel or barrels. The possibilities with rain barrels are endless. The picture on the left shows two barrels that are hooked together to create a larger water capacity. The picture on the right shows a very large capacity barrel that collects water from an even larger building. 
You can find rain barrels or kits to make them at local stores such as Menards, Lowe's, TSC, and other garden stores. You can also make your own. There are plenty of DIY tutorials that you can find on the internet. The SWCD hosts a Build-A-Barrel workshop that you can attend to learn more about rain barrels and how to make them. Another way that we can reduce runoff and increase infiltration is by creating a rain garden. A rain garden is a garden of native shrubs, perennials, and flowers planted in a small depression which is generally formed on a natural slope. It is designed to temporarily hold and soak in stormwater runoff that flows from roofs, driveways, patios, or lawns. So what are the benefits of having a rain garden? Well, it reduces the runoff, which reduces flooding risk, which in turn reduces stream bed destruction. It also reduces sediment, nutrients, and other pollutants from entering the waterways. It increases infiltration of rainwater in landscapes with impervious surfaces. It can infiltrate as much as 30% more water than a flat or sloped lawn area. But it also creates a beautiful landscape that attracts wildlife. I'm going to go a little more in depth into rain garden construction since they're a little more complicated than rain barrels. Some of the rain garden dues, as far as location goes, you want to keep it at least 10 foot from a building foundation. That way roots and things aren't trying to get in under that foundation and possibly ruin it. You also want to place your garden on a down slope or a flatter surface away from the house. Once again, we don't really want water to go into the house. You also want to have good soil to work with. And you want to work it into your existing landscape. You know, the shape or the location of the garden can be worked around things that you already have in your yard. And you also want to put it somewhere that you can enjoy. This is something that's going to be beautiful. And there's no point in having it if you can't enjoy it. Now, let's talk about some rain garden don'ts. First, you want to know where your septic tank is located, if you have one, because you don't want to build your garden over the septic tank due to the roots growing down and if you have to maintain it, it's no fun to dig up your garden. Next, don't place your garden where the water pools for more than 24 hours. Standing water is a great place for mosquitoes to lay their larvae, which then turn into mosquitoes, which no one likes mosquitoes in their yard. Also, avoid placing it under a large tree. Trees shade the area, which can make it hard for other plants to grow underneath. You also don't want to be dealing with roots when you're digging your garden. Lastly, watch out for utilities. Always, always call before you dig. So this picture shows a side view of the structure of a rain garden. The idea is that water runs downhill and we want to slow that water down, capture it, filter it, and let it infiltrate into the soil. This picture shows a slope and how they dug it out so that there's a flat dip in the middle and a berm on the downhill slope. This picture shows how the garden has an inlet and an outlet. The outlet should be built up to hold in the water, but it should not be higher than the inlet in case of overflow. We don't want the water to flow into the house if it does overflow. Also, the depth should be above the water table. Again, we don't want standing water. How big do you think your garden should be? Well, that depends on a lot of factors, including soil type, the slope, average rainfall in your area, and the amount of impervious surfaces. Now, we're not going to do the math now, but in your packets, you have a sheet that shows you how to do the math in simple step-by-step -step instructions. In a rain garden, it is ideal to use native perennial grasses and forbs for several reasons. They're adapted to both flooding and drought, which is what a rain garden experiences. When it rains, all this water comes in, but then when it's not raining, 
it's absorbed and then it's dry. Also, their roots go deep into the ground, which increases infiltration. You can see in this photo, which you also have in your packet, the difference between turf grass, which is what most people have in their yards, and native plants. The roots of the turf grass are only a few inches deep, which doesn't allow the water to penetrate very deeply. On the other hand, native plant roots are several feet deep, taking the water deeper into the soil, which is what we want in a rain garden. Also, rain gardens are low maintenance. Yeah, it may take some time and some effort to get them started, but once they are established, they are very low maintenance. You can use less fertilizer, less chemicals, and less water. Don't plant invasive species. Invasive species can be very, very harmful to an ecosystem. So it is best to know exactly what you are planting and buy it from a reliable source. In your packet, there is a page that has local nurseries that you can buy native seeds and plants. The Greater Elkhart County Stormwater Partnership Incentive Program also offers a reimbursement up to $250 for native plants for rain gardens. There are a few requirements. You must be the owner of the property and it has to be in Elkhart County. It must be a minimum of 100 square feet with no more than one plant per square foot. And you have to complete the application with the required documents. And you have to attend a partnership or approved workshop, which this presentation does count as one. And you will have an on-site visit by a partnership staff. If you have more questions, you have more information in your packets. There are a few things that you want to consider when you're thinking about putting in a rain garden. First, you want to think about growing conditions. What kind of soil do you have? What kind of sunlight does it get? And how much rain are you going to get in that area? Those are all things you have to think about, especially when you're trying to figure out what plants to put in it. Now, considering plant types, you want to think about the plant height. You also want to consider bloom times. So do you want flowers early in the spring, in the summer, and the fall? If so, you got to consider what plants bloom at different times. You also want to think about colors. Do you want it all yellow or do you want to have a variety? Those are all things to consider when you're thinking about plant types. You also want to consider your style. You know, do you like things that are very square and symmetrical? Do you like things that are wild and free shaped? You know, think about what you want, because this is your garden. But you also want to keep your neighbors in mind, because they might have a different idea, and they may not be keen on a weed patch in your backyard. You also want to consider the cost and the maintenance. Now, depending on what route you choose, either plugs or plants or seeds, it can all look a little different as far as cost goes but you also want to consider the maintenance. Now, rain gardens can be fairly low maintenance, especially after they're established, but in the first three years, it's gonna take quite a bit of maintenance to keep it looking nice. Which brings me to my last point, patience. Beauty takes time. A rain garden may look like a weedy hot mess in the first year, but as time goes on and with proper care, it's gonna look good in that two to three year range. It's not an instant beauty. Now, this picture shows the Elkhart Environmental Center rain garden when it was first put in. It looks fairly bare, and it does look nice because they put mulch down, but the second picture is taken a couple years later. What a difference it makes, that time. Now, this slide shows another example of how much difference a year can make in a rain garden. Now, with all things considered, you are the one that has to decide which option is going to be right for you. Is a rain barrel going to be right? Or do you want to create a rain garden? Or do you want a big rain garden or a small rain garden? Whatever you choose, it's up to you and what works best for you.